Uh, hi, this is Joe again with another movie review. And for the sake of this video, I can't get into a little bit of what. And then is I'm doing movies or reviews on either movies or television shows after the holiday comes out. After the holiday is all done and finished with. <coughs> because I did it for, excuse me, did it for Halloween, did it for Thanksgiving. And I figured, what the hell, go for the trifecta and do a review after Christmas. Which is what I'm doing. I'm recording this video on December 26, 2016, which of course the day after Christmas. So it can this one be any different, you know? Um, so I'm doing a classic. Well, previously, I've done a review of the very first animated Christmas special, which was Mr. Magoo's Christmas Cow. So I figured, I figured, what the hell, do a review of the most famous version of a Christmas Cow. And it's a live action format. And of course, the 1951 movie Scrooge, the Christmas Cow, uh, starring Alistair Smith, Sim. And of course, there were earlier versions or movie versions of a Christmas Cow, uh, but the 1951 version is definitely the most famous one. Uh, and we know there's been like about 9 billion versions of a Christmas Cow, at least it feels like that way, but anime versions, like from Mr. Magoo to Mickey Mouse or to. Um, uh, that, that was a, another Disney version, but then I have the, the, you know, the, the stereotypical Disney character that had Mickey in it, Mickey or Goofy in it, uh, but there was another, uh, there was a couple of different animated versions, I think it was also a Flintstones one, which I think you can find on YouTube, so, so there's been like 20 billion versions of Christmas Cow, cause like the diff definitive Christmas story. And so, but the 1951 movie is the most famous movie version of it. Even though there's been several, several different versions, including one with Patrick Stewart, one with George C. Scott, and now the, I'm talking about the actors actually play Scrooge. There's even one with an Albert Finney version, which was a musical version. I mean, yes, they actually made several musical versions, playing Mr. McGoo Christmas Cow, which I previously reviewed. Well, 1951, uh, Christmas Cow, like I said earlier, starred Anna Smith, uh, a sim, playing Scrooge. Uh, like I said, it's the most famous, uh, like the defin definitive version of uh, playing the character of Scrooge. Now, who doesn't know the story of a, Christ of a Christmas Cow? I mean, he hasn't been like brain dead because it's constantly being shown in December. Uh, constantly, oh, that's about every version you could possibly think of, except for maybe this one. Uh, the 1951 version is probably shown like on uh, like TM, uh, like TCM, or, like ton of classic movies uh, channel will probably show it. But it hasn't been shown on regular television in I don't know how long. Uh, it's got to be at least about approximately almost 30 years. Uh, anywhere between 20 and 30 years that this show, this movie has been on regular television. And it was usually the colorized version. It's the same ver 1951 version but colorized. Uh, because Ted Turner came in and colorized some black and white films, including this, including this one, Miracle Three Fourth Street, uh, It's a Wonderful, It's a Wonderful Life. He colorized all these classic films, and now uh, mo uh, movie channels have been showing the original version, the non-colorized version. Uh, the, of course, the original version, of course, most of these movies were, were black and white. Uh, so Asa Smith played Sam said. And I don't think Smith, but it's actually Alistair Sim, plays Scrooge, and of course, it starts off that with him just losing his partner, like seven, like, but like seven years earlier, his partner, uh, Jacob Morley, had died, and he's got himself a new associate, who isn't a full partner yet, just an associate, but Bob Cratchit. And of course, on his way home on Christmas Eve, and what next to night, late to about at least seven o'clock, most businesses are, are closed by then, and of course, most people that left early because it was Christmas Eve, or, or closed earlier because it, cause it was Christmas Eve, and closed the next day. And so Scrooge says, "Look, you better come in tomorrow, otherwise you're fired." So as long as my home, he starts encountering strange and weird events, and of course, as he people as he walking by, he's being careless, and people are asking Scrooge to donate money for charity for for the poor, sick, sick kids. And he says, why should I donate money to people who should be, if they're poor, they should, get to, they should just kill them off. Kill them off the planet. 
uh, only the rich should survive and all, all this nonsense. Kind of protect politicians today, the world rich of money and all that stuff. And so the rest of the people, the rest of the poor, the rest of the, the average schmucks should just get off the planet. There, there, was, there was his attitude. And then while he was coming home, he runs it, starts running into the ghost or the spirit of his old partner, Jacob Marley, who told him, look, because he wants to help his old partner and trying to not get into the life that he is now in the afterlife. And as Jacob Marley is now dead, he has a long chain and he's suffering. He can't go up, pass on to the, to the next world, the uh, next plane, because of the way he treated people in life. So he says to Scrooge, look, I want to help you. Look, you have three spirits visiting you. And they all, the, and if you don't change your ways, as if saying this three, this, these three spirits, you're going to end up like, eventually end up like my spirit has ended up. And I don't want, I don't want that to happen to you. Uh, because we've been friends for so long, I don't want that, I don't want that crap to happen to you. So it says, oh, I said, oh yeah, well, come on, that's a bunch of nonsense. And of course, eventually, uh, he gets visit. He gets in the uh, version I mentioned with Chris, Mr. McGrew, Christmas Cow. He gets first visited by the Christmas present, and then Christmas past, and then of course Christmas uh, yet to come. Well, in the original version, I guess maybe it's the same in the book too. He gets visited by goes to Christmas past, which was a good chunk of the uh, and that's of the, of the movie. For some reason, that like, was like the longest one. Uh, the longest spirit visit that he had was with close equipment's past. And then you see close equipment's present. Uh, of course, equipment's past, it does deal with uh, his Scrooge's sister who died, and he had to take care of, of a nephew. Uh, which in other versions of, of equipment's color that I've seen, you didn't see the, the bit with the sister. Just the nephew, and that's it. And as he was older, as an adult. But uh, then you had uh, you know, with the sister dying. Uh, then you see another version, another past shadow. They call, they call them shadows, uh, past memories uh, of him being alone in school. Uh, now the kids were wanting to, to bother with him and all that stuff, so he got bitter, bitter about it. And then another period where he had his fiance who dumps him. Because he's more concerned with making money. I said, look, I want to be a good husband. I want to have money for you. And, of course, if we don't have that, I don't want to be some poor schnook. I have to worry about supporting you. I don't want to have to worry about supporting you if you have money. Uh, if you have, you know, a couple million dollars, I don't have to worry about not being able to support you. I want to, I want to be able to support you and all this stuff. So, so, so his girlfriend says, Forget it, you're too much. You're more interested in making money than you are me. So screw you, and dumps him. Uh, then of course he had a Christmas present with the whole of the stuff with Bob Cratchit and with Tiny Tim. And said, look, at these shadows. If you don't change your ways, Tiny Tim is eventually going to die, uh, and die very, very, very soon. And and he says, oh, oh, jeez, you know. And they to remember that all the poor sick people should be just. Taken off and be shot or killed or whatever. So, and then you have, of course, you had. I know I'm going fast, fast here. Uh, then, of course, you have the ghost of Christmas yet to come. When, of course, Scrooge realized that also very, very soon that he will die very, very, very soon if he doesn't, you know, stop these images from coming true. If he doesn't change his history or, or the or the current. Uh, way he's living, he, very, very soon, within a few days, he's going to die if he, do, if he doesn't uh, change his ways. So he's trying to change his ways, and like Christmas being in his heart and carrying it through the whole year, and then he spent money to get uh, a big turkey or a ham for Cratchit to have a good, at least a decent Christmas dinner, and then he tells, at the end, tells them, tells uh, Scrooge tells about Crash and said, hey, we're going to make you a full partner, we're going to make you money, and I'm going to do whatever I can to help you with Tiny Tim. You with, with your son Tim, because I understand he's sick and all that stuff, and I'm going to do everything he can to make his life as comfortable as humanly possible, trying to help cure him and raise him and all that stuff. 
and I give him the best doctors, whatever. Whatever, whatever he needs, he's, whatever he needs, he just ask me and I and I give it to you. And that's and that's pretty much the uh, how the movie ends. And one thing that I'm really surprised of this movie is on YouTube and just for sort of recently. That's why I'm first doing it now instead of doing it before Christmas. Uh, because of the fact that, hey, when I saw it now, I said, oh, I waited a few days, and I decided to take a couple of days off and then and then do this review. Uh, one thing that I'm very surprised of with The Christmas Carol is that I'm surprised how short this is. Uh, because I've seen other versions of Christmas Carol that's way longer. The only version that was actually shorter than, than the 1951 movie was the animated versions of The Christmas Carol. But I'm saying that the live action movies is it's like longer than this. At least at least two hours or maybe slightly more than two hours. At least a half at least a half hour or so longer than this thing is. In some cases. But I was surprised of how short it was. I couldn't believe how short this movie was. And and of course they had the famous scene at least the most famous part of the movie, at least for me, for Clint Miscow, was when after the when I should go back a little bit. Was when after the three spirits visited Scrooge, and he decided to change his ways, and we woke up on Christmas morning, and he sees his his maid, and he says, "What day is this? What day?" And he says, it's, "It's Christmas Day." You know that you know that scene. And he says, "Good morning, sir." And he says, "Well, what day is this? What day?" Uh, because that clip of a Christmas Carol was used in the original Lethal Weapon movie. And Gary Busey's character crashed a, a car into Murtaugh's house, and the TV was on, and they had that scene from A Christmas Cow, and when the lights, when when Scrooge actually made, uh, what what day is this? And she responds, "What day?" And Gary Busey shuts up the TV. He says, "It's goddamn Christmas!" And he shuts up the TV. Uh, that's why I always wanted to see this version, and and because of that scene in *Lethal Weapon*. I can't believe I'm calling Lethal Weapon in this in this video. But but in terms of the film, I think it's always fun to look back and to see and to see a classic uh at least a classic version of a classic story or of a depressing story and uh Christmas Carol is a, a depressing story. Like most Deacon's Charles Deacon stories are depressing in a way, even though I never read any of them. But this one is very, very depressing because you see so many versions of it on television, one version after the other. Um, especially during this past weekend, because it was Christmas weekend, and they constantly show this movie. Just as much as they show a Christmas story or Home Alone. Uh, there's about like three movies that they show on Christmas: Home Alone, uh, Christmas Story, and a Christmas Carol. That's it. I mean, there's only three movies you actually really see. You may see something like Die Hard, which is based on Christmas, or maybe the first day of the Ripper film. And that's it. That's all you see. The see on on uh, Christmas weekend. So that's my review of uh, a Christmas Carol. Please check uh, 19, the 1951 version of Christmas Carol. Please click on the video. Please read it. Feel free to feel free to comment on. It. Please subscribe to my channel and please follow this video on your Facebook pages. You can check all my watch all my videos on my YouTube channel. My rallyc.com. That's on WDY. Rallyc.com. As a homepage in the Valley Reviewer, Christine Moore, please check out all of his uh, videos as well as all the stuff on all the content on his website. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.